It's never been easier to get on the water with Academy Sports and Outdoors. Stop by your local Academy store or online at academy.com today and shop fishing's top brands like Luz, Zepco, Abu Garcia, Shimano, and more, all at prices you'll love. Find the latest gear for making your next big catch with all new 2021 fishing combos, rods, reels, and more. And with Academy's wide selection of gear, great brands, and highly competitive prices, find everything you need to have more fun out there. Hello and welcome once again to the Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast Series. This episode is titled Understanding Rough Inlets. We're going to be talking to Captain Dave Tilly of Wild Rover 3 Charters out of Carolina Beach, but he's also the owner-operator of saltwatercentral.com, which many of you are aware of. And we're going to be talking about understanding inlets in general, why they are rough, conditions to look out for, how to avoid getting into trouble, and then what to do if you find yourself in some trouble in one of these North Carolina rough inlets. I'm Gary Hurley of Fisherman's Post. Fisherman's Post has been serving the saltwater fishing community since 2003. We've been offering fishing reports, fishing information, fishing tournaments, fishing schools, and now in this latest and greatest chapter, the Fisherman's Post saltwater podcast series. And it is in this Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast series that we reach out to our captain and guide friends from up and down the North Carolina coast and ask them to share with us their insights, their knowledge on how to catch more fish more often. Albeit, I believe the true goal, though, isn't just catching more fish, but getting you and your family and your friends out on the water, spending more time together more often. And I am joined in this episode, just like I am episode every episode, with my co-host, and that would be Billy Thorpe of Co-Pilot Studios. Billy, it's good to be back again. What's up, Gary? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Even though you're sitting real close, sitting right there. I can almost reach you. What's up, man? You doing all right? I'm doing good. I'm excited to be doing a podcast again. I've missed it, and that's a good sign. It's It's not a chore. It's not drudge. I'm very much enjoying it. I've missed it. I hope you had a good vacation. And now yeah. here we are. We've got longtime friend Dave Tilly going to talk to us about navigating inlets. Looking forward to it. I'm excited, man. It's going to be a good episode. And uh, just so uh, everybody is reminded how to watch, how to listen, I will remind you of that right now. You can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Google Podcasts, uh, most recently Amazon Music. And YouTube, you can go in here and watch. So if you want to see Gary's pretty face. And be sure to subscribe and share uh, and you can go to fishermanspost.com if you don't want to write any of that down and find a whole list under the podcast tab. Uh, so, yeah, Gary, that's uh, I know you've subscribed to all those channels and you listen to every single episode when it comes out. I did subscribe to YouTube. <laughs> I was the 1,000th <laughs> subscriber. You know, we had offered uh-huh. a prize to the 1,000th subscriber. <laughs> and as Dave Tilly might point out, I am very frugal. I, he might say cheap, but very frugal. <laughs> and so I wanted to keep that prize for myself. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that's awesome. I'm glad we got sponsors for the show because we're not going to have any viewers <laughs> after that. And speaking of sponsors, we want to thank Marine Warehouse Center here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And here is a quick word from them. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Robbie with Marine Warehouse Center in Wilmington and Charleston. We are headquarters for Pair Custom Boats. These center consoles are handmade in Washington, North Carolina and are custom designed for fishing and family fun on the water. Right now, we have several models in stock. The deal times on the custom orders are around five months. These boats are custom built to fit your needs from the seating, the tops, the leaning posts, and the live wheels. You design the entire layout of your boat. Come by and see for yourself why they're one of the fastest growing boat builders in the country. We love Marine Warehouse. Yeah, and you would think after 40-something episodes, I'd have a better segue. <laughs> Whatever. I never, no one ever accused me of being a good podcaster. They just said I'm a podcaster. So anyway, Gary, what, what do you have to say more about Marine Warehouse? I know you got something crawling on you about them. Well, I don't know if you remember because, again, you have been on vacation. You know, while I've been working, you've been on vacation. But that's another <laughs> another topic. But as a... Uh, before you left, I was informing you that Emmett, Emmett, one of the owners of Marine Warehouse Center, has been very aggressive with his New Year's Eve resolutions for 2021. I mean, a laundry list of resolutions, and the one he was telling me about this week um, when I stopped by the shop and started talking sales service parts is uh, that it's his resolution to dress with more style, that he wants to be more fashionable. All right. 
What does that mean? Like extra tough boots or what does that mean? Well, it means like space? while to prove it while we were there, he grabbed a brand new Marine Warehouse Center trucker hat off the shelf and put away his old one. And so he walked out wearing a brand new trucker hat. So he's <laughs> he's already made that resolution. I mean, he's already on his way. I'm going to go get mine. I lost mine between here and vacation and back. So I don't know what the heck happened to it, but I'll probably swing by there and grab some gear myself. And, and so should you if you're watching this or listening to it. Go. Maybe I'll start wearing a Marine Warehouse Center hat. You should. I don't know why you haven't been. You're not as loyal as I am, Gary. I love those guys, <laughs> even though I don't have a boat and pay them to do service on it. <laughs> I get a, I wear, I buy their hats though. Okay. Oh, well, there. All right. It's the same value, right? Work on my boat, buy a hat. Same, yeah. same amount of profit margin, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm in the apparel business. I know how this works. <laughs> well, show us a fish photo. Yeah, here we go. A little fish photo. Where did you go? Here you are. Look at that. Easton Hampton caught and released this flounder on a piece of cut mullet while fishing the surf in Carolina Beach. That's a good looking fish. Yeah, man. Kid catching a fish from the surf. I mean, we're talking to Dave Tilly from Carolina Beach, and we're going to be talking. I think the inlet's there in the background. We're going to be talking about inlets, and certainly Carolina Beach Inlet is on Dave's mind as we're talking about inlets. So I figure that fish photo was appropriate for this evening. Good pick, Gary. Great about pick. That? All right, so I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to invite our guest to join the camera. But before I do, as we do every issue, uh, every issue, every episode, Billy Thorpe, we are looking for Billy's best takeaway. So Dave's got a lot to say. He's got a lot to say. So I need you to come up with a good one. I Billy's don't know. best takeaway. You think Dave will have that much to say? Yeah, I'm not even. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat something <laughs> while he talks. I'm not even gonna. I'm just going to crank them up and let them go. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll take notes, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Well, if you would, please, let's invite Dave to the screen. Let's get him up there. Hello, Captain Dave Tilly of Wild Rover 3 Charters and SaltwaterCentral.com coming to us from the heart of Carolina Beach. How you doing, man? Howdy, y'all. <laughs> oh, we're doing super. We're doing super. Sitting here on the front porch, just kind of chilling out this evening, doing my best uh, Ron White Im imitation. You know, life is good. Life is good. I see some resemblance. I like the Ron White. I, I see some resemblance. Let's go with that, man. Well, I'm, I'm ready to talk That's to right. you. Man, so I love that you came up with this idea. I mean, this was Dave Tilly's idea, and we're talking about understanding rough inlets. And again, as I introduce, first you're just going to give us a little inlet 101, then we're going to talk about okay. why. Go ahead. Let's start. Let's start with just what, what, is, what is an inlet? Well, wait a second. You know, Before we and, get to the content, I've got two questions for you. Okay. Okay. Fire away. Question number one. Why should we listen tick, to what tick, you have to say tick, about an tick. inlet? Well, um, I don't know. Should you? You know, uh, uh, I hold a 210 master's license. I've been doing this. Uh, just I just did my 30-year renewal this past year. I've been out more than one. Uh, I've run out of Carolina Beach, I've run out of New River, I've run out of Moorhead City, I've run out of uh, New River. I've been up and down the coast here over the years and, you know, been there and done that. All right, that's an acceptable answer. We'll continue with the podcast. All right, so question number two, and this is the tradition, it's a non-fishing related question, a non-topic related question in this capacity. So my question for you, Dave Tilly, is, you know, I, I pulled this inspiration from shallow draft inlets, thinking about shallow. Speaking of shallow, which is, in your opinion, the most shallow Kardashian? Oh, Lord, you asking the wrong guy, man. I don't, I, I don't know any of them. <laughs> I didn't think you Who did. the hell is Kardashian? Is that like a sweater or what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you did. That's why I have a follow-up question. Look at me. I have a follow-up question. And maybe you have an answer to this. I don't know if I could be able to answer it. I'm going to give you two choices. Who is, when it comes to movies, who is your favorite deep voice, James Earl Jones or Sean Connery? James Earl Jones. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. All right. Enough of that. Let's get to the business. Let's get to the business of inlets. Tell me something about an inlet. Give me an inlet 101. So, so you know, it kind of starts with what is an inlet. An inlet is an area of, is a body of water where where you can pass from inshore to offshore. Now, an inlet can be small and narrow, or it can be really broad. You know, uh, it goes all the way up to a bay. If you go up uh, in, the, in the northeast, up in the Maine, or you go down into the Keys, or you go over into the Gulf of Mexico, 
they don't really have inlets like we do here in the Carolinas. They're, they're these big, massive bays. Now, you run into some of the same problems, but think about a funnel and think about how a funnel works. If you take, take a funnel and you pour a bunch of water in one side, on the other side, you're going to get a stream of water out the other side, and that stream of water has gained velocity. And velocity to an inlet is kind of key. Uh, so, so here in the Carolinas, we have we have fairly small inlets. None of them are really large. You even look at say the Cape Fear River, or or you look at Beaufort Inlet. You know these inlets are fairly broad, but they're still uh, they're still fairly small in a in a as part of a scope. They're still very much a funnel. And the the issue that you run into with these inlets is is you take a large mass of water and you shove it into this funnel and it comes out the other other side in a heavy stream and that's kind of the key to the inlets here and the key to, to watching out for them but I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself um the other issue that you run into with inlets uh well uh, going back to what an inlet is uh here in the carolinas most of them are extremely shallow you know, you look at New River, you look at Carolina Beach, you look at, uh, you know, uh, any of the inlets, Shalote River down, uh, Shalote Inlet down to the south of us. You know, most of these are just small little cuts. And I'll give you an example here in Carolina Beach. You know, if we've got three and a half, four foot of water across the bar, it, that's actually a lot. You know, that that's a lot of water. Uh, you know, and, and, and that shallowness in, uh, makes the velocity worse. Um, gentlemen, I have a have a request for you. If you would, how about putting one of you two back up on the screen for us? All right. There I am. There we go. There we go. Thank you. M makes it a little easier versus sitting here looking at myself. <laughs> um, um, so so it, when you put the get the bottom involved in it, now now not only have we taken away the width, but we've also taken away the depth. And uh, you know the, the depth of these inlets, even on a good day is uh is you know, nothing major here in carolina beach you know even at full high tide we might see seven eight foot across the bar which is not much you know uh you go up to beaufort you know where you've got a 50 or 60 foot channel or you go down to uh, uh cape fear river where you've got once again a 50 or 60 foot channel um it makes it fairly while those inlets have their own issues with the velocity issue uh it's not like Carolina Beach or or Charlotte or one of these where where we've got no water across the bar and you're shoving all this 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 water on the falling tides across the bar. So having a having a bar is just it happens with every one of these sort of shallow draft inlets we're talking about inherent to North Carolina. I think it it, it even happens with uh, with the big ones, and and if you think about it, it makes sense. Um, when you, when you, if you go out here in your yard, you take a water hose and you dump a bunch of water in, you'll see where, where it kind of, it'll run for a little bit. And then it goes into, I think they call it an alluvial fan where it kind of spreads out. If you look at the Mississippi river, you, you know, the Mississippi Delta is the alluvial, alluvial fan. Um, well, you get the same, same thing going on out here. Here in Carolina beach, once again, we have the Cape Fear river right behind us. And a lot of that is coming out of our inland. And what happens is, is that it picks up all the sediment and, it, and the, it, the water carries it along. And then when it loses that velocity, the sediment falls out of it. This happens in just about every inlet, you know, in, in, in the world, I would guess. You know, look, I don't know that to be exact, but uh, I, right. I would think so. The sediment falls out and where that sediment falls out is what we call the outer bar. And so even, you know, Wrightsville Beach jetties, there's going to be maybe less of it, but Absolutely. some element of a bar outside Wrightsville Beach, Absolutely. just like Cape Fear, just like Beaufort. Cape, Cape Fear River's got one. Beaufort's got one. Carolina Beach has got one. Charlotte's got one. Uh, you know, the hell, the, the, the Mississippi River's got one for that matter. And so these things are shifting year to year, as in the severity of the shallowness, as far as like some years you might have a little bit more water outside Carolina Beach on the bar and then some years worse or how does that work? I, I think they shift on a, on a almost daily basis. You know, when you, when you have the, the storms that come by and shift the sands around, I mean, you know, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. You know, I know in, in some years, uh, 
when we had a really narrow inlet, it would kind of keep it blowed out fairly well. But nowadays, you know, we have this alluvial fan out there that, you know, man, if I've got three and a half, four foot across the bar, I think we're doing pretty good. So I know you've been spending a lot of time with inlets working on your saltwatercentral.com project. And do you have, is there a shared opinion about which rank the worst as far as North Carolina inlets, at least this past year or the well, last couple of years? So, so they're all bad. They're all bad in a different way, but they're all bad. You know, you take any of our, any of our inlets, uh, from, from, you know, up North Hatteras, Ocracoke, uh, you know, all the way down through Beaufort and, and, and New River and Carolina beach, you know, they're all bad in their own, their own sort of way, but they do have some things in common. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today, tonight was, uh, w w was what to look out for and what to pay attention to. Well, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm in like, tell me what to go. Cause that's what I was thinking. I'm like, all right, well, like, what do I look out for? What do I, what do I want? What do I want to avoid? So, so the big key in any of these inlets is a falling tide and you go, well, why would a falling tide matter? I can tell you that any inlet every single day that the tide is falling is rougher than if the tide is rising. A rising tide will make for a much calmer in than a, than a falling tide every day. Now, does that mean every day at a falling tide I shouldn't go out the inlet? No, no, no. Some days there's nothing to it. And some days it's rougher than dog crap, which is kind of where this whole inlet project with me started. But that's that's another story. Um, what you got to watch out for is that falling tide. And especially a falling tide with velocity. Well, velocity, well, what, what's that mean? Think about a full moon. You know, I don't know whether how much you guys keep up with the moon levels, but when you get a full moon, you get much higher tides and much lower tides. So that means that we've got that much more water moving in and out of those inlets. So anytime you get around a full moon, you're going to have more water, more velocity moving in and out of that inlet. And that's that's the time of the month where you really got to start paying attention. So why is it that across the board with apples to apples a falling tide is worse than a rising tide i didn't i didn't get i didn't get that so let's talk about offshore for just a minute gary okay. when um when when you have wind and waves all right when the wind's blowing in one direction and the sea's moving in the exact same direction then most of the time the wind is going to knock the seas down and stretch them out Okay. This is called period, and this is kind of one of the basic things behind period. When the wind is in one direction and the seas are in another direction, then it shortens them up and stacks them, makes them higher. Gotcha. All right? It's the same sort of idea. When you take the velocity of the, of the falling tide and put it against the ocean water, because your ocean water is here, and then, then you've got all this water coming back at it, it makes it... it the the ocean water coming over over top of or the tide going over top of the ocean it makes them stack up and with it makes them higher with a shorter period does that make sense yeah man i follow that logic completely man that makes sense i never thought of it that way about water moving into the larger body of ocean water and it's either going under and pushing it up or going over and going up and over yes sir yes sir and and, and, it, and it can do both um the issue that you run into is on these falling tides that that water will, will start pushing against the ocean and, and it, it shortens the sea and stacks it, makes it higher. And, and you know, given the right conditions, it can be quite considerable. And I can, I can tell you there's been more than one occasion in my career where, where going out the end, but it's seven, eight foot. And, and as soon as you, you hit the outer bar, it's flat calm. There's nothing. Yeah, I think most of us have experienced that, you know, running out the inlets where if once you get out of that inlet area, then it's just a beautiful day out there, but it's just sketchy, you know, nervous or whatever it's you want to use. That's right. That's right. Get, you know, get into that position. So, so the other big thing that you got to watch out for is when the wind is directly, well, we call it being up the pipe. Okay. So it, let's go back to the funnel, the funnel idea. So we've got this funnel. We've got all this water cramming in one side, shooting out the other side. Think about the, 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 the funnel. I don't know what you'd call it. The nozzle, the, the skinny part of the funnel. How about that? 
All right. Where the skinny part of the funnel sticking out. When you've got the wind coming directly at that funnel, that means our our primary C is going to be running at just about that same that same uh, direction, and these two are going to collide. And when these two collide, is when you're really going to have problems. That's when you're going to see those seven eight footers, and then it's going to be flat calm, or you're going to see it where they're stacked right slam on top of each other and breaking. You know, it, it's direct. It's because that primary C is coming straight up the pipe. So what do I, I'm not sure where to, you know, what question is set up now, as in, like, you've told us, I guess, what to look out for, but what do we do about it? Like, you know, some days it's going to be more rough than other days, so how do we handle it? Like, what's what's the advice? It's easy enough, Gary. Stay right. the hell out of the inlet when it's rough. When you approach an inlet, when you get there, look out at it. If it makes you nervous, if you have to question, if you have to think in your head, man, should I do this? The answer is no, period. <laughs> Turn your ass around and go back home. Go wait somewhere. Go have a beer. Do something. Don't go out the damn inlet. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Well, how about advice for this scenario? I went out, and it was nice. And then I fished, and now I'm coming back in, and it's not so nice anymore. So, so when you approach, when you approach that inlet, uh, well, and, and I tell you what, Gary, can, can we turn that around? Let's talk about going out again. Sure. And, and, and let me cover going out and then we'll, we'll turn around and we'll talk about coming back in. I'm in. So, so let's, let's say that you do approach the inlet and you decide that it is safe for you and your vessel. You decide to go. My number one piece of advice to you is once you're in that inlet, do not turn around ever under any circumstances and why is that you see it through so so there's a thing thing in the in the maritime world called broaching and this is what happens to a lot of boats they'll go out the inlet they'll freak out they'll panic they go to turn around the wave picks them up from the side and over they go it's called broaching that's bad don't want to do that when you go out the inlet, and to me, it's actually easier to, to, to go out than it is to come in. Because when you're going out, you've got the narrow part of the boat pointed at the sea. At least you've got something to break it, you know, to, to, to break the incoming sea. And most of the time, you know, going out, you, you'll get through that. Most of the time. You know, this is all based on what kind of boat you got and what your seamanship skills are and blah, blah, blah. Most of the time, you'll do all right on going out. Keep your bow directly to the sea. Take it easy on the throttles, especially when you go to climb it. You know, I, I don't know whether you guys you know, watch some of the stuff that you see on the Internet. You know, these boats coming out of the water and, you know, all kinds of craziness. You know, this is from somebody giving it too much throttle as they go up the face of the wave. That's the last thing you want to do. When you go up the face of that wave, come back on the throttle and, and give it enough throttle so that you can keep control of it. But keep that bow forward and, and keep moving. But don't go zoomity zoom zoom. If not, you're going to go straight up, up in the air. And because the motor weighs the most, you're going to come down on the ass and you're going to flip over there. Just give it enough throttle to keep your bow directly to the sea. And for God's sakes, don't turn around. Keep going until you get beyond the bar. All right. I got a follow up question. I mean, this is all good advice. So I'm headed out and you say, definitely don't give it gas going up the face of the wave. So is the best technique, and again, I know we're talking about multiple variables, multiple boats, but is the best technique to find a set speed and then just hit that set speed that allows you to maintain control of the boat? Or do you give it a little bit going you're down working the, the throttle. You're, huh? you're, you're, you're working the throttles. When, when you're, you're approaching the wave, you give it enough throttle to maintain control. As you go up the wave, you pull back on the throttle as the wave breaks past you. And then once the wave has broken, then, then you, you get back on the throttle. And I'm not talking about wide open plane right. kind of get back on it. But give it some more throttle so that you can get back control of it to get past where these waves are breaking. Because the next wave is going to break in the same place. If you stay in the same place, guess what's going to happen? 
<laughs> <laughs> so you, you want to make progress with this. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. No, I mean, I think that's great advice. I think that's something everyone can follow, man. You know, you, you get a little momentum going into it, pull back on the throttle going up, and then as soon as that's past you, you want to give it. You got to get moving. So you maintain control of the boat again, yes, get some forest progress going so that you get through that section that is a section you don't want to spend much time in. Hey, Gary, I'm, I might also add, uh, you know, I know a lot of your listeners are in outboard boats. You know, I run inboards myself, but uh, a lot of you guys are in outboards. Take your, your motor and put it completely down, 100% down. And I, I personally would say to do that going in or out. You know, always have that motor completely down. You go, well, why do I want to do that, Dave? You know, why don't I want to trim the motor up? I want that motor down as far as deep as I can get it so that that prop can grab as much water and gain as much torque as it can get. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm when you trim it up, you, you, you start why. getting air in. Well, because when you trim it up, when you trim it up and you think about it with a, with an outboard engine trimmed up, uh, when that water, when that wave breaks beside of you or, or on top of you for that matter, where's all the white water? Isn't white water like got bubbles in it? Isn't that why it's white? How yes. much, how much traction do you think a propeller gets in white water? Zero. Not much. Not much at all. I want that 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 propeller down in the clean water if I can get it because that's where I'm going to get the propulsion and that's where I'm going to make it make the vessel move forward. Um, I follow. All, I mean, this is it seems logical. It seems you know like we would have it, but I think it's good it, it to is say logical, it Gary. It, it, it is logical, Gary. But I I watch people do it all the time, not like this. You know yeah. what I mean? I think it's valuable to say it out loud. I mean, I'm I'm applauding us us i'm applauding you for getting it out there um any other thoughts on going out before you tell me about coming back in just don't stop until you're until you pass the bar i mean just just you, you got to stay on it um one thing i would i would also you know throw in just kind of as that safety reminder anytime that you've got a questionable in, inlet crossing everyone on the on the vessel should have on board life jackets you, know, you should have life jackets on. You should be at the ready. I can tell you that, that there are a lot of accidents along North Carolina in these inlets, and a lot of people die that shouldn't. And that's that's kind of what started me down this whole inlet path was I'm tired of watching people die, and I don't want anybody else to die. There's no reason for it. I'm with you. I'm, I, that's why I was excited about this podcast topic, man. I was fully on board immediately, man. All right, help me get back in the inlet now because that's where, you know, I mean, I follow my path. I follow my line on the electronics, but, man, it makes me more nervous for sure trying to read an inlet coming in on the backs of the waves than looking at the waves. I'm sure I'm sure that's the hey, shared experience. And you know what, Gary? We, we didn't even discuss reading the water on the way out. So why don't we back up just a second and let's talk about reading the water going, going out. And then we'll talk about reading the water coming back in. Sure. Um. So on the way out, when you're sitting inside and you're looking out at, at an inlet and you're seeing all these breaking, breaking waves, I've, I've, got a, I've got a friend of mine here in Carolina Beach. His name is Captain Shane Snow. He runs the fish witch. He has a funny saying, don't go where the white water is. There you go. <laughs> when a wave breaks, it creates all this white water. So, so when you look out at the inlet, when you look out at all of it, and you see white water to your left and white water to your right. You want to go where the least amount of white water is, or no white water, pr preferably. Go where the white water ain't. He's a smart guy. I uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know him. Him and his family have been doing this for a long time. And you know, I've, I've cracked. I, I crack on him about saying that sometimes. But you know, you you hear us talking about it on the radio. Say, well, go where the white water ain't. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, so like it's a flip. I was going to say it's like we're reading the surf zone too. It's surf it. I mean, you see a wave build and then you see it not break, and to the left and the right you see it break, and so you know you got your right. deeper water or you know that's your sweet spot. So again, that's it's all point. it's all makes sense, but I think it's valuable to say out loud. Good for you. I think a lot of people a lot of people actually need to spend some time sitting in an inlet watching it. And and I'm not talking about because you're going fishing that morning or or because you're on your way out talking about you really ought to take your boat and go right up the inlet one day when it is kind of bouncy and sit there and watch i mean you know most most people that that own boats i mean you got at least two brain cells you know rub them together get a little friction going on and and watch what's going on it it doesn't take long for you to see the pattern 
I'm in. Um, is this now where I transition you to running back into the inlets? I mean, okay. this is this is okay, your show. Yeah. Well, you know, hey man, I'm just answering the questions, you know, and uh, drinking my bourbon, so life is good. Uh, you know, Ron White, I think he's on tequila nowadays, man. I got I got to flip him over to the bourbon. I'm sorry. I got to look him up. All I don't right. know what he's up to. <laughs> yeah, last time I saw him, he, he was on on tequila. You know, he had his own uh, his own tequila brand. <laughs> That's what we need some wild over three bourbon. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, ah, that... Man, <laughs> Billy here, he's the, he's the businessman. You just get Billy's light bulb just went off. He's going to talk to you about it after the show. Damn, Skippy, let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the tester, though. <laughs> okay. So um, um, let's, let's talk about coming back in. The key to coming back in, Gary, is not to be in a hurry. At okay. the end of the day, you're safe, right? I mean, you're in the ocean. You've been fishing all day. You're safe. You don't have to go in. You don't have to come out for that matter, but, but you don't have to come in. Now, maybe, you, maybe you've got a, a date with the wife or you've got a date with the girlfriend or you've got a business something to do. Well, I hate it for you. You know, the ocean don't care. And that's the first thing you got, you got to understand about the ocean. The ocean don't give a flying 40 about you. All right. You have got to you've got to sit down and and decide, you know, do I really have to do it and do I have to do it now? So so you, as you're approaching the inlet, most of the time what you're going to see from offshore really isn't a whole lot. Uh, you see these glassy rollers, you see because you're looking at the backside of the waves and and as they break, you'll see them foam up and everything. Now, most of your viewers are, are running outboard boats, so I'm, I'm going to kind of bring it down to the outboard boat version versus the big sport fish version like what I do. Okay? okay. As you're approaching the inlet, I would suggest that you pull up to the sea buoy, maybe halfway between sea buoy and one and two. That's the first two cans, the first red and green are one and two. So pull up halfway between the sea buoy and the first two cans and stop. And just sit there for a minute and watch. Now, Gary, you surf and things like that, uh, so I know I know you're aware that waves come in come in sets. There's yes. generally three or four to a set. You sit here and you watch these waves, and you can you can like I said, you rub two brain cells together and see the pattern. You know, okay, here comes three. One, two, three. Now we get five or six that are fairly flat, and then one, two, three, and we get five or six that are fairly flat. Well, the part that you want to go in on is the part that's flat not on the one, two, and three. You know, you want to go in when, it, when it's the absolute calmest. The second advice I can give to you for running an inlet is as you're coming in, pick a wave and, and crawl up on the back of it. And I want you to think about uh, somebody surfing, just like you go surfing on a surfboard, except instead of being on the front lip of the wave, I want you on the back side of the wave. I want you to take the boat and run it up on onto the uh, the back of the wave, and then pull back on the throttle so that you stay there. And you take your boat and you match the speed to. The, you're going to ride the wave all the way. In. You're going to stay with this one wave all the way in the bar. And I'll, I'll never forget in the Wild Rover Two was a 25 aqua sport. And uh, we were out fishing the King Mackerel Tournament, and I was coming in on it, and I had my brother-in-law on it. And uh, we're coming in Carolina Beach Inlet, you know, and the, 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 the halo's up there taking pictures of us coming in. It's rough as hell. Teams are fairly large, and I'm down, crawled up on the back of this wave, and I'm riding it in. And I turn around and look, and the wave is breaking directly behind me. And, and look, if you didn't know anybody, you'd think this wave was going to break in the cockpit. You know, I mean, it was going to break right over the back of the boat. No. Stay with the wave in front of you. As long as you stay with that wave, the one behind you is never going to catch you. All right? Stay on the throttles. Stay on the back of that wave. Now, this takes some constant throttle adjustment. you got to speed up. you got to slow down. you got to speed up. you got to slow down. There's going to be a ton of that. Stay with that wave all the way in. That's the secret to, to, to running the end in down. I, like, I like that advice. I mean... I, I think I followed it myself. I mean, just sort of, you know, said, hey, this is a good spot to be. But I like saying out loud that a wave behind you isn't going to catch you if you stay with the wave in front. Waves aren't going to catch each other. That's so right. just stay with the wave, you know, st marry it all the way in. 
that's right. You just take it and ride it all the way in. You know, uh, you know we call it surfing, you know, that, uh, but not surfing like you do on a board. On the, you're surfing, we're on the front side of the way, but we're on the back side of it. We're just going to ride that sucker all the way in. And once you get in, it's no problem. Nothing to it. And I like the take your time, and I like assessing the situation. I mean, these are all I'm, – I'm feeling good. These are things that I do without being told to do as, you know, playing the conservative game. Um, but, hey, hey, look, conservative is the only way to play with the pond. I, I'm with you, man. I mean, I, you know, you're right. The ocean does not care about my date with the wife at in any way. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> or my date with my girlfriend. Um, hey, uh, what about what to do once you get in trouble? Oh shit! <laughs> <clears throat> so, so Gary, the first thing you want to do is is don't do anything stupid. All right. I had an incident this past year that I don't really want to talk about here, but in the same same breath, uh, it wasn't on my boat; it was on another boat. Uh, don't don't make rash decisions. You know what I mean. When, when, when you're in trouble, when you're in trouble, slow down, calm down, and think. Don't make a decision that's going to put you in a worse situation than what you're in. That's, that's number one right there. You know, uh, these guys were fine where they were. They were uncomfortable where they were, but they were all alive. You know what I mean? And, and that's important. That, that, that's, that's a big thing. I'm alive. Life is good. You know, uh, so don't do anything dumb. The, the next big thing is when you approach the inlet and you see that it's it's rough, it's enough that makes you nervous, it's enough that even makes you question whether or not you should or what what extra precautions should I take, number one, put your life jackets on. I know you're, oh, well, I'm, I'm big sturdy captain. I'm not going to put my bullshit. Put your damn life jacket on and have everybody on the boat put the life jacket on because you know what? No, nothing is worth your, their life. Your life is not worth your ego. All right. Protect yourself. Protect everyone on board your vessel. That is, that is, the, you know, that goes back to seamanship 101. Protect everybody. Number two, you're coming in. Let's say that you're going out and your engine dies. Let's say that you're going out and you run aground. Let's say that uh, you're coming in and your engine dies. Oh, shit, now what? Yeah. Number one, put your anchor down. Before you do anything else, before you screw trying to restart the motor, before you go mess with the battery cables or whatever else is messed up on your rig, go drop the hook. What's going to happen here is it's going to turn you around and it's going to put your bow to the sea, which is what you want. Now that now now that your anchor's out and and you can at least stop uh, stop you from broaching sideways, at least it's going to pull you you know around so that your anchor is is to the front uh, to the bow, so that you don't uh, you know it doesn't swamp you from behind, it doesn't swamp you from the side. At least you're going to be taking them on the bow, so that that that's a head start. Put your anchor down. Number two. Um, You know, as much as I hate hate to say the Mayday call, you know, don't don't be afraid to holler Mayday. You know, I mean, if you need it, that's what they're there for. Uh, when you call the Coast Guard, you know, you're going to want to declare an emergency, and that's an important catchphrase with them. You wish to declare an emergency. That means that they have to roll assets and, you know, kind of put it in gear. So so that would be your your next big thing so that you can get help on the way. You can also get help from the other vessels around you. You know, uh, everyone is supposed to maintain watch on 16. Now, a lot of people don't, and shame on you if you don't. You should be maintaining watch on 16. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else. What, what I, did I miss there, Gary? I don't know. I mean, here's one question that comes to my mind: if if the boat if the boat does get tossed, what's the school of thought? Stay. With the boat, near the boat, get away from the boat as far as you can. Any moment the boat rolls, we're all in the water. I'd stay. I'd stay as close to the boat as I could. Um, you know, the, the the issue is is when other vessels or other other uh, the Coast Guard, Hilo, any of that stuff comes to find you. You know, seeing a head bobbing in the water is almost impossible. Uh, finding that boat is actually fairly easy. 
finding your head bobbing is you know, hell. Who knows? You know what I mean? I got you, man. Um, no, man, I think you've covered everything. I mean, these were our talking points. This is exactly what I sort of imagined that, that this podcast would follow. And I think it's great, man. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Now, if I wish I had done more homework, but I didn't do more homework to better set this up. We we're here at the end of the podcast. So, you know, please tell please tell us. I know you didn't come on here for shameless self-promotion. I'm forcing <laughs> I'm forcing you to do that now. You just wanted to do a service. But please tell us a little bit about saltwatercentral.com in general and then the the inlet plug in the inlet element app that you've developed as part of one of saltwatercentral.com's offerings. Well, so, so, so I do, I, I'm in saltwatercentral.com, and, and after this incident last year, I had a model in my head, and, and I've had the model in my head for a couple of years, but I, I really got involved in, in creating it. And what we're attempting to do is to forecast rough inlets. And, and so I have a, a model called ReefCast, and you know, ReefCast does a really good job. If you, know, if you guys haven't heard of it, go out, search ReefCast. Go, go read everybody else's comments about it around the world. We've been doing it since the late 90s. Uh, really good weather model. We're using ReefCast to decide the direction of the seas and whether or not they're going up the pipe. And if they're coming up the pipe, then on the falling tide, uh, what times of day you can stay the hell out of the inlet. You know, if it's, if it's coming right up the pipe and there's enough velocity and it's a falling tide, then we're going to tell you on Tuesday between, you know, 3 and 6.30, don't go there. Or be, be weary of it. At least be cautious of it. You know, and we do this seven days in advance and we do it for, you know, I'm attempting to do it in every inlet around the country. Uh, you know, it's still basically experimental at this point. You know, there's nothing stamped in, in uh, concrete with it as of yet, but I'll get it there. You know, it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, maybe with some of your viewers' input, you know, when they go out the inlet and go, hey, that wasn't rough, or hey, man, it was really rough, you know, by golly, I'll get this thing tuned in just as tight as we've got ReefCast. Um, I know you will, man. I've enjoyed watching you over the years, you know, frying pan tower, transition to saltwatercentral.com and not scared to take on a project. And I, I, I've enjoyed our friendship on many levels and one just watching the next thing you're going to create. Dave Tilly, I think that brings us to the end, man. I'll give you this screen. Any any last words before I go and find out what Billy's best takeaway is? <laughs> um, um, no, no. Be safe. Be safe and be safe. You know, uh, you don't ever have to go, uh, but we always want you to come back. Coming back is preferable. I don't want to be doing any search and rescue for you or any users or anybody that you know that watches this. You know, be safe. All right, Dave Tilly, friends, thank you, man. Y'all have a good evening. You too, man. Appreciate it. Take care. All right, man. Good episode, Gary. Yeah, man. I knew it'd be easy to talk to Dave. I knew he'd be full of information. Um, That was great, man. I mean, I think he's doing this. That was his model. Again, he did not want to promote. I wanted to promote. He just wanted to do a service, man. He felt a little bit of a calling since last year. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot, and for my non-boat owning self, I got a lot to. If that yeah. time comes, I know if what you, to do. If you ever get a boat, watch this episode again, <laughs> dude. I'd be gassing it so hard, just flipping stuff out of there. That would be your oh podcast. Uh, just give it speed and uh, take chances. Yeah, make sure your seat though membership is good <laughs> and gas it. <laughs> so, what would be your best? takeaway um man i think it, you know i'm a pretty simple guy so stay away from the white water made sense to me like all right no, white water see you later you know there's so. there's beauty and simplicity man and i'm with you like yeah. it's it, it is you know it can be that simple just reminding us of the truths out there the logic out there well dude a couple more things that caught my interest during this podcast episode one captain dave tilly said gary you're a surfer and you said yes did, I, I didn't say yes. I just didn't say no. Oh, oh, oh I, I thought you said, oh, okay, okay. I thought you said yes. I'm like, 
Really? I didn't know that out of, after all these years. I mean, I grew up in Ocean City, Maryland, boogie boarding every day. I got, I, I'm a boogie boarder, but I never transitioned to surfing. I probably wouldn't have said that, Gary. I would just would have left it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And then I learned that you have a girlfriend, which is whatever, man. I, I threw that out there very nonchalantly, <laughs> wondering if Dave would pick up on it, and he didn't. I'm like, all right, I guess oh, that went nowhere. Yeah, because both of us are like, oh, my God, Les is going to kill everybody right, in this like, podcast. I mean, if no one recognizes it as a joke, then maybe. But I was waiting for someone to like go, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Well, there's your oh. Thank moment. you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, man. Well, Gary, good episode. want to thank Marine Warehouse again. Once again, for being a sponsor of the show. Love those guys. So go check them out. If you don't have a boat, and like me, go shop with them. <laughs> and buy two and give me one. <laughs> I'm going to just carry that one out. Anyway, Gary, anything else before we get out of here? No, man. Great show. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. We'll see you the next time. Fisherman